And you are winning awards for what individual businesses are doing. Now I have to say, for the very first time that I came to South Africa, which was to work with DEET, what was then the Department of Environmental Affairs and Tourism, I think in 1999 it might have been 2000. I was working with them on guidelines for implementing responsible tourism to try and do that on what you're still talking about here in Cape Town, which is to realise the ambition of what was in the 1990s. And many, many businesses at that time told me, privately, not to worry about responsible it would pass, there would be a new minister, there would be a new policy. Well, if there are any businesses in the room, let me just remind you, the policy's not changed. The 1996 white paper is still there. It's still the national government policy. It hasn't changed, it stood the test of time. South Africa was the first country, and indeed still the only country, to adopt a national standard of responsible. 2011, and I applaud you for that. I think it was a massive step forward when that was done. Now, if we come to what is the justification for government engagement with tourism, why should government spend money marketing private businesses? Because that's what government does for the private business. The main beneficiaries of the marketing, which is done by Cape Town and by other municipalities and marketing organisations funded by states around the world is to try and bring more visitors to the city. There are very few industries which look to government to do their marketing for them. Now the way you judge somebody like Anton or Mombalele or, or, or Cape Town Tourism is in terms of the number of arrivals and bed occupancy is what worries you. But I think we need to start to look at this slightly differently. We need to start to look at how many jobs are created and how much taxes what is the return to the people of Cape Town for the investment that they make in tourism? That has to be the important question. The 2002 conference here in Cape Town, as a side event to the World Summit, um, which took place that year in Johannesburg, with UNWTO and UNEP, was a fantastic occasion for me. I co-chaired it with Mike Fabricius of Western Cape Tourism. For me, the legacy has been major. For the world, the legacy of that has been major. WTM, as I've already said, has taken it to four other shows. I'm putting very firmly on the commercial map. Anton asked me what he said um, just now about why responsible tourism has not gone viral for Cape Town. It's a very good question. It's certainly gone viral for Hotel Betty, a Victoria uh, Waterfront, and for many of the other outstanding responsible tourism. Uh, businesses in this city. I'm looking forward to hearing tomorrow, particularly from Lombolela, the city council, about how she sees the progress since 2002 and what the opportunities are. This conference is, is co-located with WTM Africa. It's a massive opportunity to take down. I'm delighted that WTM Africa is based here in Cape Town, and I'm delighted that we're able to bring the Responsible Tourism Programme here every year as part of that. The awards which are taking place on, will be uh, presented on Thursday, we did the judging yesterday. I can tell you there's some outstanding winners in those awards, and some of them are from this province, I think, city. But it will be interesting, I think, for the, for the council to reflect on who those winners are um, when they're announced on Thursday. There's some great examples of responsible tourism practice in the city. Um, and I wanted to finish what I'm saying by thanking Heidi without whose efforts 